Hello everyone, my name is Matt Barami from Ofram Research. Welcome to the five session of the Simplified Machine Learning Workflows with Anton Antonov. If you are joining us for the first time, Dr. Antonov is an applied mathematician with more than 20 years of experience in algorithm development, natural language processing, and machine learning. Today will be the part five on the Quantile Regression Workflow. And Anton is going to address some questions, comments that was raised by you through the Wolfram community and other platforms. Handing over to you, Anton, looking forward to your fifth session. <laughs> uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, so most of these questions, uh, they have, uh, I have received them while uh, presenting at different meetups, uh, like say in Boston, in the US R group, I have a, an alternative package, which is both uh, written in, it's written in R, so I presented there both the packages in written in R and Mathematica. Uh, at the Wolfram Technology Conference, um, at other meetups here in uh, Florida, in uh, Central Florida and uh, South Florida, and uh, some questions over the over the web, different uh, different uh, community sites and uh, Mathematica Stack Exchange. Um, many of those questions, the way the ones I selected here, they are, um, I would say, representative, and hopefully they clarify some confusion. I'm going to give short answers to all of the questions uh, here, and then we're going to examine in detail some of the, the answers. Um, so uh, in the previous sessions, I did, uh, uh, I did use uh, a particular package called uh, QRMON, which stands for Quantile Regression, Quantile Regression Monad. And uh, this is a software monad. Uh, being a software monad means that we have this pipeline, uh, like what you see here, this is the pipeline symbol. So the, you know, is it possible to do quantile regression without this package? Yes. And um, there are several implementations uh, of, the, of the core base uh, function, which QMON uses there in GitHub. And most recently, uh, it is also in the Wolfram Functions repository. I'm going to expand on this a little bit uh, later. A related question is uh, why I'm using QMON at all. Well, it actually, we'll see, it simplifies it simplifies and clarifies a lot of the workflows. Also, quantile regression is um, sometimes you need to adjust the parameters, you need to make some repeated execution. Um, this question about uh, doing quantile regression through some sort of moving window uh, function application, which is very similar to um, so-called local regression or LOES, no, I don't do that. I'm actually using a uh, basis of functions by default B splines or use a supplied uh, basis of functions. And I'm using certain optimizational method. Uh, I'm making a linear programming uh, formulation and I'm finding the appropriate weights for, uh, for those uh, basis functions. Uh, this uh, again, maybe so some of the explanations here would be Probably I'm not going to give more explanations. I'm going to be discussing uh, the how how this is being done in while answering some other questions. Um, what happens if the quantile regression uh, fitted curves intersect? Well, this means we have overtrained uh, our quantile regression, and yes, uh, this can be problematic. This uh, in, as any overtraining, we just don't train as hard, you know. So. We either re re reduce the number of nodes or reduce the order interpolation order. Uh, this was a very interesting question um, in, uh, you know, basically a group from MIT in Boston. Uh, how does quantile regression look over three points? Well, it looks just fine. Uh, I actually see this more of a, uh, as a software, software robustness type of question because Using my linear regression, uh, sorry, my quantile regression formulation through uh, linear programming using that implementation, this is not problematic. But some of the faster methods, like say Roger Kionka, who introduced quantile regression in here, you know, in modern times and computational made it computationally feasible with variety of theoretical uh, studies, his package in R, for example, might have some problems with uh, say three points. That's not uh, theoretically essential though. I mean, obviously the, you know, for three points, we're not targeting three points uh, when we do quantile regression. Um, we're not targeting three point data sets. Uh, what is, uh, uh, so here, 
I think it's related uh, to how we pick the approximations when we construct constructing the conditional CDFs. Conditional CDFs, uh, there, I mean, this is a conditional CDF here, like this curve. Well, I roughly, I mean, you can see it here. I use linear regression. I use linear, linear, not linear regression. I use linear uh, interpolation, linear, um, because uh, if we don't use linear functions, we can get some very, we can get smoother, nicer looking curves, but we, we, we don't know are they really approximating the signal. Well, this surprisingly also comes, why use quantile regression at all? Um, I would say um, this seems that, um, this is a fundamental question. If we know the theory, both behind linear regression and quantile regression, quantile regression should be the obvious choice. If, uh, if you are doing right now, whatever you are doing, and you, you're doing linear regression, you're most likely doing it wrong. If you're not using quantile regression, you're most likely doing it wrong. Linear regression has certain uh, assumptions about the data, about the signals. Uh, quantile regression does not, does not have the same assumptions. It's actually, uh, it's much more data driven and it's less uh, model centric. <clears throat> um, the theoretical background of the computations, this is something I mentioned. Well, uh, there's, a, there's an article in my GitHub repository. I'm going to link it in the, in the notebook, which is going to be uploaded to community after this presentation. Uh, in that article, I have uh, in full detail have explained what is the implementation. You can also just look into the implementation, which is uh, right now into the, into the uh, a Wolfram repository function, and you can see the actual implementation with the linear program. You can um, reverse engineer it from there. Can quantile regression be used for forecast? Yes. Most of the time, most of the examples, I have been using them for quantile regression for analysis, but yes, it can be used for forecast. It's very uh, analogous uh, to what... One uh, quick we, question, yeah. because mm -hmm. in the past, you distinguishes between the where forecasting and predicting. Can you also comment on that? You know, what do you mean? Like, you know, why do you distinguish? Um, very, very good point. Uh, very good question. Um, so uh, forecast is uh, forecast is something we uh, we do uh, using resources, signals, in some sense, with time series interpretation, time series analysis. We're trying to do. We're doing uh, forecast what is going to to come further up, um, and uh, with um, prediction. Prediction is more about given that this is the universe. Like say in the example here, this is from the previous examples. You see, this is something, but this is temperature in uh, I think in the Orlando area. So in some sense, I expect this to to hold. And now my I'm, I can make predictions with the conditional, conditional um, cumulative distribution, distribution functions derived at any of these time points, I can actually make some sort of uh, prediction. This uh, conditional CDFs I'm showing here, they're about prediction. The forecast is how we're going to extend this signal. And for example, in my, in my examples later on, I'm going to discuss this further. Uh, and uh, to Matt's point, most of my uh, examples have been into the on the prediction side, like say finding anomalies, finding typical behavior, uh, describing the signal, not so much on the forecast uh, side. Uh, although I do use this for forecast, especially if I have to do uh, simulations in order to do operations research, I am using the forecasting uh, perspective, meaning I have analyzed the signal in such a way, I have made my predictions that I can actually reconstruct it in the future, you know, in certain ways, uh, which suit my uh, suitable for my optimization goals, whatever you know comes from operations research. Th does this sound? I mean, this is a little bit too long explanation, but uh, did uh, I answer your question? Yep. Yes. Thank you. Um, so. Uh, this was actually an interesting question from the Wolfram Technology Conference a month ago. What is the point of using this anomaly detection methods? Um, like, uh, if you know, because a human can easily do it. And this is actually not as naive as it sounds, or as it sounded to me. Maybe it doesn't sound naive question to you. Uh, this is related to the forecast and related to the prediction. So uh, again, uh, when I say anomaly detection, 
I'm actually not forecasting anomalies. I'm detecting anomalies uh, from uh, from the uh, from the signal from the data uh, I have been given. Like my universe, whatever it was, uh, that uh, uh, I'm actually looking into the into the actual um, actual um, uh, data uh, the the data which has been presented to me. I'm now detecting anomalies within that data. So. Uh, so yes, I mean, we can do also forecast what's related, you know, forecasting anomalies, but then this means that we're actually forecasting the signal and because we're forecasting the signal, I can apply the anomaly detection methods. So, um, so in a sense, uh, that's why I have separated the two. I'm separating the anomaly detection from the forecast and I'm not talking about anomaly forecast, I'm talking about anomaly detection. Uh, can neural networks be used instead of uh, quantile regression? Yes, it's actually one of my favorite examples. In the previous uh, lectures, I did um, I did show how to what is the analogy between quantile regression and neural networks. Um, neural networks, are of course, more complicated. But uh, the thing is that um, it depends. Uh, in order to make a quantile regression formulation with a neural network, you need to have access to uh, the so-called loss function, which is used in the optimization loop of the neural network. So there's an optimization loop in the neural networks, there's an optimization in quantile regression, as I said, with linear, linear programming. If you can change uh, the function, and you should be able to, uh, of uh, in the neural network loop, your loss function, then yes, you can do quantile regression. Um, but actually, very often the packages give you some pre-canned access to that uh, loss function. You might need to have some more lower level access to this. Uh, what are the implementations in in uh, other, meaning this language, other implementations in other popular data science languages, like say I and Python, maybe Julia, maybe Java, like, yes, they are. Um, I would say the one in R is the most uh, theoretically developed because uh, the professor I mentioned, uh, Roger Kionka, he mostly programs in R. He has been actually, he knows the people who created the R language. And so uh, that package uh, uh, is Quantrec in R is very well developed and very well documented from a uh, theoretical and software standpoint. Um, I would say the, you know, a, every workflow we have been discussing and it can be learned here. Yes, it, it easily can be found uh, from, you know, in other, other packages. Uh, so I'm going to answer in more detail some of the questions here. And, um, so, so here we are. Uh, before doing that, uh, let me let me make a short review. This is the type of data we, we have been using in the previous sessions. I'm not going to use all data, but I mean, I have this distribution data. I have this time series data. Um, and um, here is a typical um, typical uh, workflow, and uh, basically. Finding uh, finding uh, different regression quantiles, the curves uh, which are being fit through the points uh, called regression quantiles, and um, in this particular case, after we have found the regression quantiles, you can see a two percent, twenty percent, fifty percent, eighty percent, ninety-eight percent. I can use the the bottom and the top uh, regression quantiles, these curves, to find outliers. You, we might say that they're not outliers, they're outlier candidates, but uh, if we look uh, in more detail into this particular example, all of the points marked as outliers, they are actually outliers. Um, there's another, this here, it's another example which goes into, uh, into using simulations, using this kind of fit in order to produce uh, uh, simulated signals and um, uh, this is basically what I what when I was answering about prediction and forecast and the differences. Yes, this is related to that. When I'm doing this, uh, because in some sense I'm expecting when I'm simulating uh, this uh, signal, this is a simulation over the points which I have already seen. So in, so I'm not. This is not the forecast perspective. This is the prediction perspective. I am actually replicating. Uh, uh, different versions of the same of the same uh, of the of what I have learned about this process. Different instances. Uh, I'm trying to produce different instances of that process uh, in the same in the same domain. 
in the most likely this domain is uh, time, but we have seen in some other situations that it, the regressor doesn't need to be time. The regressor can be temperature from the previous day. So here we're trying to predict the temperature from uh, the temperature today or temperature of tomorrow from, this is actually wrong, it's either today or uh, it should be, uh, we're trying to predict the temperature from of uh, today uh, use, looking at the temperature of yesterday. So whatever the regressor points are, and again, this is the actually the analysis perspective, the prediction perspective, it's not so much the forecast. Uh, so, okay, so this is just a short review. I'm going to uh, probably return to these examples, but more importantly, what I wanted to discuss is, um, it's actually um, a section I should uh, include here. Um, this is related to the first question. Um, can we use quantile regression without, uh, without uh, the QAMON uh, pipeline monad? Uh, yes, we can. Uh, VESA resource function, you can see uh, Wolfram, uh, the Wolfram function repository uh, lets you, uh, lets uh, users in, you know, both internal and external to Wolfram research to uh, submit functions, which are not necessarily in the kernel, but these functions are probably useful and they can be, uh, can be utilized, you know, people who submit them uh, have provided some detailed explanations about them. So I'm going to click on this uh, link in order to get uh, to get this page and you can see it's uh, it's the familiar documentation format we get from the function pages at uh, in Mathematica. many of the workflows many of the um, properties uh, we discussed in the previous uh, sessions they can be found uh, here like so for example in applications or so finding you know finding um, finding outliers or finding, uh, uh, analyzing the, the temperature of the time series and et cetera, you can, you can find this uh, all here. Um, also the very, I did uh, put uh, um, quite a lot of possible issues uh, uh, sections um, and uh, overfitting, for example, corresponds to, to some of the questions we, we saw earlier, you know, so uh, this, uh, this should be, um, it, so, Back to the, the question here, can we do this quantile regression without the, the software monad I have been using in the previous sessions? Yes, uh, we just use the workflows which are described in that, uh, uh, in that page. So I'm going to use the resource function here. I'm not going to use my packages. This is already an approved function. Uh, so this, uh, uh, this is over the distribution data and you can see I fit it uh, here with a certain number of, uh, of, uh, of nodes. Let's actually do this. You can see how, how this uh, looks like if I simplify the result and so this. So you, I, I can take now this function and do further things with it. So uh, there's, um, um, actually I'm not going to expand more on this, but yes, you know, by all means, uh, look at this uh, resource function. I documented uh, uh, the use cases with, uh, both with explanations and, and code. So, uh, so there's, um, um, no, 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 I mean, this actually, it's a favorite question of mine, but so I'm going to put it here. The fitting of um, fitting, doing quantile regression over three points. Yeah, I mean, it's just straightforward. I just, I mean, you can see I'm just generating some random points here. I mean, let me, I mean, obviously it might happen, but if I, if I have uh, generated so here I'm generating just, uh, and this is one of the reasons I'm using this mod, I'm generating just three points, right? But let's uh, generate, uh, let's generate um, uh, three points and uh, uh, with, uh, it's like a matrix, right? And if I change my interpolation order to say uh, B1, oh, you can see what is happening. Uh, as I said, theoretically, no problem whatsoever. Um, computationally, because of my um, implementation using quant using linear programming, uh, there is no again this this works. Some other packages which uh, emphasize on uh, say speed or certain other properties, mostly speed, they might have some problems with this. Um, the let me find another thing here because we talked about forecast. I'm going to jump ahead and uh, uh, answer this question. And then I'm going to answer why I use uh, quantile regression. So 
Mm, let me see if I, I'm going to use here an example from, uh, from, uh, from a previous, from a question I got uh, from um, Mathematica Stack Exchange. I'm not going to go through all the motivation behind it, although it should be clear. We have certain amount of data. And uh, I think the question was saying, can I identify um, they conjecture that this data is generated by a certain, uh, certain number of sine and cosine functions. And so can those be identified? And the question asked uh, to do that using Fourier analysis, somebody answered using Fourier analysis. Uh, because quantile regression, obviously I can, and this is related to some of the things I mentioned earlier, it can be used with, uh, it can be done with a, uh, automatic basis, this is with B splines, or it can be done with uh, user-specified basis. If I do, um, if I supply my own basis, and you can see here, I'm supplying my own basis of uh, 307 functions. They are all, let me evaluate this. They're all, um, you know, sine cosine functions. Um, I can then do, I can then do this fit. And um, I mean, it takes slightly longer because of the, uh, I have lots of basis functions here. And uh, it, is, uh, it, it is longer to compute. But then after we look into uh, the terms which are found, they actually, they more or less answer this question. They actually do show, they do show how uh, we can use some combination of sine and cosine functions in order to approximate the, the signal, the gray points given here. And here answering the, the forecast. And yeah, I mean, if you use, if you use in, in your basis of functions, if you use functions which uh, have infinite uh, carrier, meaning uh, they domain, the domain of the um, uh, argument, like in this particular case, time is infinite. Yeah, you can actually just uh, just do, do that. I mean, so instead of like, uh, this signal is given between, say, apparently minus one and 40 or whatever, right? I mean, I, I just did it between say, uh, so I can do it between say minus 10, in, uh, in 60, right? So basically, yeah, I mean, I can, I can, I can use this to, to make forecast. And this goes for anything, right? So this obviously other data. In some other situations, you should do the usual tricks of forecast, like doing some differences or doing some, you know, detrending, denoising and so forth. But I mean, more or less, this is the, the, the crux of the explanation. We, we just use um, a basis of function, which is, um, which supports uh, this kind of, um, uh, supports uh, doing forecast. By default, what you see here, and uh, let me see, can I expand this? Uh, so this should be a very big, big uh, piecewise function, right? So in some sense, this piecewise function, you can see by, uh, I mean, it has some, there's some limits, right? For all of the pieces here. So this function is just within the domain, which was already given. And this is the this is what is this is what is the default basis or the automatically used basis if I use uh, quantile regression like this. It's a B spline uh, basis functions where uh, piecewise and uh, with finite uh, finite carrier finite set of um, of the time variable. All right. So uh, this was my uh, this was uh, one of the uh, the the questions. Uh, which uh, was, it's a very, uh, as I said, I really wanted to answer, like I'm going to go, um, probably there are going to be less examples um, and for the rest of this uh, session. Uh, why use quantile regression? Well, actually, this, um, this kind of question uh, comes uh, for two reasons. If, I, if we look into this here, um, People, I don't know, people I think get confused, but this is, I'm just trying, I'm doing quantile regression in order to do this kind of visualization, which, yeah, true. I mean, I want to do this visualization, uh, but I'm not just looking into some analysis or visualizing uh, the signal. I'm not just looking into some better to comprehend the signal picture. Uh, I do have quite a lot of uh, things to do afterwards. And um, one of the, the, the big things uh, here is that um, I do actually want to, to use um, 
to, to do say outlier detection, uh, I might do some uh, simulations. I might want to be reconstructing the signal at given time point. So if I pick certain point in time, I might be considering, want to figure out what is the, um, the conditional distribution functions. One of the important things here, and um, this actually, let me see, can I, can I do this um, from uh, the, from the functions I have is actually is uh, the robustness of uh, of uh, of quantile regression. So uh, quantile regression is much more robust when it comes to uh, different uh, when it when it when we compare it to different to other methods like say um, linear regression. And uh, this is actually one of the examples I did uh, I did uh, put into uh, into the the function into the website, into the uh, quantile regression. I'm going to actually bring it up and so give an example of what is going on. So uh, here I'm going to uh, make the make the function as, as suggested in, uh, in this. Uh, and I, I'm going to also do the linear regression. And uh, the other thing is that uh, I'm going to uh, make make the fit between the two. So this is the original. This is the this is without any. This is we're just comparing linear regression here, which is uh, with linear model fit and quantile regression. And I have given certain polynomial functions to uh, to the uh, to the linear model fit. All right. So now let me let me uh, do redo this with. Uh, by changing the data a little bit. So if I make this data here, right, and I basically repeat all of the computations here with this uh, uh, new data, I'm putting some outliers here and so this should be, uh, should be clear how, how it goes if I do Change the distrib distribution data with the new newly obtained uh, data with outliers. We can see in this plot that uh, I did. These are the outliers here, right? These points here. So, and so I can actually probably exaggerate this point. Let me see. Yeah. So we can see the outliers, and we can see with 0 0.5 this is the quantile regression curve and with mean is the the one from linear linear regression from linear model fit and you can see with just two outliers this this biased i mean this biased actually quite a lot uh what uh, uh you know linear regression is doing uh this uh, in some sense this is one of the biggest reasons to use uh, quantile regression for some people this is the biggest reason and uh, that's why i would be if i do outlier detection i would uh, rely on quantile regression because with the uh quantile regression is robust so if i if i fit if i fit some kind of curve like what the green curve here and i try to look at the errors, you know, the residuals from this curve and then find outliers, which these two are going to be picked up. Well, I mean, I know that this, uh, you know, quantile regression is not that easily swayed by outliers, if at all. And so this is going to, uh, this is one of the reasons for me to use it to do anomaly detection. Uh, I would say this is probably um, not, that, uh, not that discussed in the previous uh, sessions. And yes, it is a very important point, the robustness of the quantile regression. Um, it is uh, it is one of the main reasons uh, to do it. The other the other reason, and this is from uh, the examples I was the review example I was giving here. I actually do for me data science and uh, and statistics statistical methods or machine learning. They're just means to produce something else, some other mathematical models. Uh, they're not the end result of what I'm usually doing. Very often I'm doing, uh, I'm solving uh, operations research type of problems, like what if scenarios. And in order to do what if scenarios, I need to be able to do simulations. Uh, very, very practical, very good simulations directly driven from the data can be derived with control regression. For me, this is the other big point. And the, the analysis point here, 
it's uh, what we can do, you know, what we can do. Uh, but I can put, pick a point and then uh, reconstruct the conditional distribution function. So my last example, uh, which I'm going to go in more detail, it's related to this uh, conditional distribution um, uh, functions, the conditional cumulative distribution functions. So uh, one of the question is what's happening when, uh, what is, uh, if we get uh, some intersection of the, of the, the regression quantiles. And uh, I, I hope I can demonstrate this relatively easily. Here you can see that this is already overtrained. So probably this is from um, using the using the uh, trying to predict uh, today's uh, temperature from yesterday. If I use six knots, that actually produces better results. And so, so here, I mean, uh, this uh, conditional distribution functions they kind of make sense, right, or whatever. So, and uh, what is going to happen if I increase this number, uh, the number of points first? So in a sense, I do, do have these intersections or oh, like increase also uh, the number of, uh, the number of probabilities, the, the actual probabilities which are done. So I'm producing here some functions which uh, probably intersect. Um, yeah, I mean, we can see that there are some intersections here. All right, so uh, we, we should be able to see this in the, you should be able to see this in this, the functions which are approximated. Let me see. Yeah, we can see this last function, right? I mean, conditional uh, distribution functions, cumulative distribution function is supposed to be increasingly, uh, it's to be increasingly monotonic. And obviously this is not, not happening here. Granted, this is at, uh, the regressor value here it's furry, so I'm trying to uh, to approximate what's happening at temperature furry, and we can see this is where the intersections are. Now, there's several ways on package level. If I'm doing if I'm doing some simulations in say real time, in I might decide to just order the values here and pretend that although the curves are intersecting, you know, but they're not, but say this came from whatever, you know, for whatever reasons, you know, I can reorder this, sort the points here. Uh, in this package, I don't because I, I want the problems uh, which are happening to be, you know, to be obvious, to be, we need to know that uh, we're doing something wrong. And so, uh, so in both, uh, both of these cases, not the, the inconsistency, this uh, rule, uh, this, this doesn't, doesn't look at uh, cumulative distribution function. So this says that we either change the interpolation or I'm not sure we're gain, going to get much better results with a uh, low interpolation order. But low interpolation order can produce a better, um, um, yeah, better results. I'm not going to, computationally this becomes for whatever reasons becomes heavier so i'm just going to go back to uh changing the number of knots so um i can do um i can do i can change the interpolation order in uh, or change the number of knots and you can see what i have been doing previously uh starting this signal i notice that with interpolation order three i don't get a good approximation Again, I get, I'm, uh, I'm afraid that I'm going to get too many intersections. Uh, so I probably changed, uh, changed the interpolation order to two, but now I still don't, I mean, I still get lots of intersections. So this again tells me I'm overtraining. And so uh, I'm going to just change this to much less in number of knots. And now I don't, I don't see any, any kind of, I mean, there, if there are some intersections, they're like where they expected in the majority of the, or the majority of the points, the majority of the <clears throat> um, regressor set, uh, we, we don't see intersections. So now we, we basically, all this uh, simulation, all this CDFs and et cetera, they start to look, uh, they start to look better. I still have some problematic behavior at point 30, but well, yeah. Um, all right, well, um, before I, um, let me see, have like uh, uh, a little more time for, for another question here, it's um, the theoretical background. Um, this, um, as I mentioned, um, I'm going to uh, put the link uh, to this, um, uh, to, to the actual article, which spells out uh, how to do uh, the, 
how to do the formulation, the mathematical formulation of the linear programming um, implementation uh, for doing quantile regression. Um, I did, the reason I wrote that paper was that uh, there are some, although, I mean, I, the methodology was described elsewhere. There, in my opinion, uh, quite a lot of small details which are uh, not presented if you want to actually implement it in, uh, in, in with software. And so there's some, um, quite a lot of, um, uh, both, uh, both uh, theoretical details, but also how this theoretical detail is being mapped actually into some uh, data structures representations uh, when you implement this. There's some kind of also the formula being used, you know, how they actually map. So that paper was uh, supposed to address that. And um, as I mentioned before, you can just download the, the definition notebook uh, from the repository. In definition notebook, we are going to be able to see the code behind the implementation. It's uh, actually fairly short, so fairly easy to understand and can be reverse engineered by uh, looking in some of the examples, like say here the robustness example and see what exactly is happening there. All right, I think uh, I answered all of the questions I put here. Um, anything else, Matt? Okay, thank you, Anton. Let me see, you know, there was one question on the yeah. Twitch channel. Okay, we already, you know, tell them how to interact with you. Uh, so I think since there is no more question, you know, we could wrap up, you know, this session. Uh, thanks, yeah. Anton. Uh, you were watching the fifth session of the Simplified Machine Learning Workflow with Anton Antonov. You can find the recorded videos on Wolfram Research YouTube channel. You can interact directly with Anton through the Wolfram community. Uh, so please ask your questions there. And, you know, like this time, you know, Anton will address them for the, during the next session. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one.